in the extraction metallurgy that is during the extraction of metals from their ores the ores are first converted into metal oxides by roasting and the metal oxides are then reduced to the corresponding metal there are so many methods to convert metal oxides to metal depending upon the nature of the metal oxide the first one is thermal reduction that is by mere heating you can convert a metal oxide to metal second method is by using some reducing agents generally we use coke carbon monoxide or some metals and the third method is by electrolysis generally the most unstable metal oxides are reduced by thermal reduction and the most stable metal oxides are reduced by electrolysis moderately stable metal oxides are reduced by using reducing agents come let's discuss this topic in detail from thermodynamics we all know that del g not is equal to del h not minus t del s not where del g not is a standard gibbs free energy change and del h not is the standard enthalpy change t is temperature and del s not is the change in standard entropy and this equation is similar to the straight line equation y is equal to c plus mx so if you plot uh, del g not along y axis and t along x axis you will get del h not as intercept and del s not minus del s not as the slope this graph is called as ellingham diagram so ellingham diagram is a graphical representation of variation of standard gibbs free energy change for various metal oxides with temperature and it represents the stability of metal oxides as a function of temperature let us consider the formation of metal oxide as an equilibrium reaction then if the standard gibbs free energy change of this reaction is negative the reaction is considered as spontaneous one and the metal oxide formed is stable on the other hand if the standard gibbs free energy change is positive the reaction becomes non spontaneous and the metal oxide is considered as unstable standard gibbs free energy change can be calculated from the famous thermodynamic expression del g not is equal to minus or tln kp where kp is equilibrium constant in terms of partial pressure which is given by partial pressure of metal oxide divided by partial pressure of metal into partial pressure of oxygen and this can be simplified since the partial pressures of solid substances are taken as unity it is equal to 1 by partial pressure of oxygen so you can write del g not as equal to minus rt ln 1 by p of o2 or rt ln p o2 let us take the ellingham diagram of the formation of some metal oxides if you see the metal oxide formation equilibrium solid metal combines with gaseous oxygen to form the corresponding metal oxide which is also a solid so if we move from reactant side to product side the entropy which is a measure of randomness decreases so as we have gaseous molecules in the reactant side and only solid in the product side entropy decreases if the entropy change of this reaction is negative then the slope becomes positive because as we already discussed the slope is given by negative of 
del s naught and you should note one thing in the concept of Ellingham diagram you should write the formation of metal oxide reactions for one mole of oxygen in this particular example four moles of aluminium combines with three moles of oxygen so you need to divide the whole equation by three and in the graph we can see for some metal oxide if you see the graph there is a sudden change in slope for some lines for example uh, the yellow line it is the line for mercury oxide so at a particular point the slope changes because at that point it reaches its boiling point the solid mercury oxide suddenly becomes gas so that is a phase transition and in the case of magnesium oxide also at a particular point it reaches its melting point so solid magnesium oxide suddenly becomes liquid due to the phase transition the slope changes thus we can conclude in Ellingham diagram for most of the metal oxide formation the slope is positive that is it goes upward let's consider the reduction of silver oxide and mercury oxide these two oxides cross the zero line of Ellingham diagram well below 1000 degrees Celsius which means they have positive standard free energy change at low temperatures so these two oxides are considered as unstable oxides they can be reduced by mere heating when silver oxide is heated it gets decomposed to metallic silver and similarly mercury oxide will form mercury generally for the reduction of metal oxides we use coke and carbon monoxide let's see the slopes of these lines in Ellingham diagram first let's take the case of carbon monoxide which gets oxidized to carbon dioxide if you see the equation the number of gaseous molecules on the reactant side is 3 and the number of gaseous molecules in the product side is only 2 therefore entropy decreases during the reaction if the standard entropy change is negative the slope will be positive so that this blue line goes upward in the Ellingham diagram next we shall take the case of carbon which gets oxidized to carbon dioxide in this equation both reactant side and product side has one mole of gaseous substance so there is no entropy change during the reaction the slope is equal to zero so this has a horizontal line in the Ellingham diagram if you take the case of carbon which gets oxidized to carbon monoxide one mole of gaseous reactant gets converted to two moles of gaseous products so entropy increases during this reaction so del s is positive therefore it will have a negative slope this is the only line which has negative slope in Ellingham diagram how to select a suitable reducing agent for a metal oxide let's discuss this by taking the reduction of zinc oxide as an example for reducing zinc oxide which is suitable reducing agent carbon or carbon monoxide first let's explain this on the basis of thermodynamics at about 1000 degrees Celsius the standard free energy change for the formation of zinc oxide is about minus 360 kilojoule per mole but now we are considering the reduction of zinc oxide so reverse the reaction 
and the del g naught becomes plus 360 kilojoule per mole if i want to use carbon as a reducing agent write the oxidation of carbon reaction in this case carbon gets oxidized to carbon monoxide for this reaction standard free energy changes minus 460 kilojoule per mole therefore for the net reduction reaction the standard free energy change is minus 100 kilojoule per mole therefore this reduction reaction is spontaneous and carbon is the best reducing agent for zinc oxide this can be predicted directly from ellingham diagram using a trick so a metal or an element lying below in ellingham diagram can reduce all the metal oxides present above it in the case of zinc oxide the carbon monoxide line is well above the zinc oxide line so you cannot use carbon monoxide as a reducing agent at low temperatures and if you take the case of carbon it intersects the zinc oxide line at t1 and gets oxidized to co when it reaches t2 the carbon gets oxidized to carbon dioxide so you can use carbon as a reducing agent for zinc oxide above t1 degree celsius we all know about alumino thermite reduction where aluminum is used as a reducing agent for reducing metal oxides like chromium oxide iron oxide manganese oxide etc here we are going to explain the reason using ellingham diagram the lines for these three metal oxides are given in the graph both manganese and aluminum are well below the chromic oxide line so we can use both manganese and aluminum for reducing chromic oxide but when you see the free energy change of the coupled reaction between chromium and aluminum it is more negative than the coupled reaction of chromium and manganese so aluminum is generally used to reduce chromic oxide in alumino thermite reduction alumino thermite reduction is generally used for the reduction of chromium manganese and iron for example if you take the alumino thermic reduction of chromic oxide when chromic oxide is mixed with aluminum and heated in the crucible we get aluminum oxide and chromium let's consider sodium oxide magnesium oxide and aluminum oxide if you see the del g not values of these oxides they are minus 700 minus 1100 and minus 1200 kilojoule per mole respectively so these oxides have very high negative del g not values which means these metal oxides are highly stable if you see the sodium oxide line the carbon line intersects the sodium oxide line at about 1500 kelvin and carbon monoxide line intersects at 1800 kelvin so practically we cannot use them as reducing agents similarly for aluminum oxide and magnesium oxide the carbon line intersects above 2000 kelvin so we cannot use reducing agents like coke and carbon monoxide for reducing these metal oxides and they can be reduced only by electrolytic reduction therefore the metal oxides which can be reduced by electrolytic reduction are sodium oxide magnesium oxide and aluminum oxide
Let's see some questions based upon Ellingham diagram. First question, which of the following statement is correct? A graph is given. If you see the graph below 1623 Kelvin, the magnesium line is below aluminum oxide line. So magnesium can reduce aluminum oxide below 1623 Kelvin. And above 1623 Kelvin, aluminum line is below magnesium oxide line. So aluminum can be used as a reducing agent for magnesium oxide above 1623 Kelvin. So the correct answer is both A and B. The second question is about the reduction of hematite. If you see the Ellingham diagram, exactly at 710 degrees Celsius, all the three lines intersect each other. They have same del G0 value. So we cannot use carbon and carbon monoxide as a reducing agent. Above 710 degrees Celsius, carbon line is well below the iron oxide line. So you can use carbon as a reducing agent. And below 710 degrees Celsius, the carbon line is above the iron oxide line. So you cannot use carbon as a reducing agent below 710 degrees Celsius. So the correct answer for this question is option B. Above 710 degrees Celsius, carbon acts as a reducing agent. Question number three. The plot shows the variation of minus LNKP versus temperature for two reactions. Minus LNKP is nothing but del G0 as we discussed earlier. The two reactions are metal plus oxygen gives metal oxide, carbon plus oxygen gives carbon monoxide. If you see the graph below 1200 Kelvin, the carbon line is well below the metal oxide line. So you can use it as a reducing agent and the oxidation of carbon is favorable below 1200 Kelvin. In option A, it is given that below 1200 Kelvin, oxidation of carbon is unfavorable. Actually, below 1200 Kelvin, carbon acts as reducing agent and it undergoes oxidation. So option A is wrong. Option B, oxidation of carbon is favorable at all temperatures. It is also wrong. Above 1200 Kelvin, we cannot use it as a reducing agent, so it does not undergo oxidation. So option C, at T less than 1200 Kelvin, MO plus C gives M plus CO is spontaneous. That is the correct answer. Next question. At 1000 degrees Celsius, which reaction is spontaneous to large extent? If you see the graph, the carbon line intersects the zinc oxide line above 1000 Kelvin and the magnesium oxide line above 1500 Kelvin. So we cannot use carbon as a reducing agent for both zinc oxide and magnesium oxide. But the magnesium oxide line is well below the zinc oxide line. So magnesium can be used as a reducing agent for zinc oxide. So the correct answer is option D. The last question is a match it. As we know the calcium oxide line is present in the bottom of the Ellingham diagram. So it is the most stable oxide. Mercury oxide in the top of the Ellingham diagram. So it is the least stable oxide. Chromic oxide is reduced by aluminium and zinc oxide is reduced by carbon as we discussed earlier. So the correct answer is option C. That's all for this video. Thanks for watching.